So I have uh, spoken about provenance drums before. Uh, I have a 14 by 5 uh, steel shelled uh, drum which was made from the panel of a VW van uh, from I think it was from the 1960s and I also have a 13 by 9 uh, cast aluminium shell drum which I believe was from a Bentley but I can't quite remember off the top of my head I always need to look that one up and I've also separately reviewed a whole bunch of snare drums that Tim uh, has made over the years and um, I, I, I dig what Tim does I mean he's not the only person that's sort of uh, you know, taking materials and repurposing them into drums, but uh, you know, he, he, what he does, he does a nice job with, and I really like it. Uh, well, obviously, I have two of the drums, but anyway, I was given this drum to review, but I actually just wanted to do, uh, you know, a little video of it as well, anyway. So, um, the drum itself is, as we have seen, a 14 by 5.25 cast aluminium. Uh, there you go. So it's uh, yeah, it's it's actually despite the fact it's only 5.25 uh, inches, it's actually I suppose quite heavy for what it is, and that's because it's a cast shell. And uh, you know I've I've mentioned about my uh, you know increasing love for cast shells uh, over the last 18 months or so, and uh, this one's sort of no different really. Um, according to the notes, it's uh, approximately six millimeters thick. Uh, and what Tim's done is, is uh, you know, the, the outside obviously has been worked, but the inside, and, and I'll get a better close-up of this, but uh, the inside of the shell is basically still rough, uh, which, is, which is interesting. I mean, I don't know if it sonically makes any difference. Possibly it does. But uh, it certainly it, it does make a, a nice aesthetic. It's a little bit different, certainly for a metal shelled snare drum. Now, the drum itself has uh, eight... Double-ended tube lugs, as you will see. It's got the very funky provenance badge there, which uh, maybe will show a bit. I don't know if it's catching it. But anyway, um, I've always liked Tim's badge. Uh, you've got the Trick GS007 snare drum, uh, uh, snare mechanism. It's the. Uh, it, it's not the one with the three. Um, sort of three position, but uh, you know it, it works. It's, I think it's probably possibly an earlier one. Um, and you've got the corresponding butt plate there as well. And what else? Oh yeah, so uh, a 2.3 millimeter triple flange hoops, and you've got uh, pure sound wires on the bottom. Uh, Remo Vintage A uh, coated uh, on the top as well, which uh, you know I've I've grown to like these heads. Uh, I, I definitely do like them. And uh, you've got the regular ambassador snare side there now oh the other thing to mention which i'll do a close-up of anyway is the so the sort of badge on the inside with uh with with some it's sort of, you know some bits of information on which i uh, possibly you might not be able to see because of the lighting where well, well, it's in there anyway and you know but um i'll give you a little bit more information on this so the uh the metal that this drum is made from uh, came from a 1944 Rolls-Royce Merlin uh, engine. It was a V12. Um, there's, I've got the serial number here. 5.25 uh, uh, millimeter. Uh, sorry, inches deep. Cast aluminium, approximately six millimeters thick, from the crankcase of the aforementioned Merlin uh, V12 aero engine, which was supposedly. Uh, used on a mosquito bomber during World War Two. Uh, mosquito bomber was uh, a British airplane during World War Two, uh, which was, I think, known as the Wooden Wonder because it was all made of wood, as opposed to most of the other planes at that point, which were made of metal. So, uh, machine finished, eight tube lugs, uh, trick strainer and butt end, rounded bearing edges, which you'll get a better look of uh, in a minute, and uh, vintage. Uh, type snare beds so the uh, pure sound custom 16 strand wires and as I said the Remo heads and stuff so uh, you've also got on the other side which is a little bit more of a sort of the, the actual uh, you know um, well provenance of the engine really uh, as I said first produced in well, the engine was first produced in 1940 and was fitted to a, uh, fitted with a two speed supercharger and uh, it was also the the engine itself was actually fitted to a Hurricane Mark II, a Bowfighter, Halifax, Lancaster, and Spitfire Mark III. 
So uh, what you also get with this, uh, I'm not doing this as an advert, I'm genuinely doing it because I like the drum. Uh, you also get a case and a proof of identity DVD containing pictures of the original material, snare manufacture and historical photographs and information. But um, anyway, I, I mean, I just said, uh, Tim doesn't make, make these on a sort of mass reduced level. So they are very much bespoke instruments, they're bespoke drums. And, uh, you know, I think that there's, there's one other... Uh, one other drum, which I, I think is a six and a half actually, uh, made from this material. And if memory serves me correctly, Tim said he's got enough material for, uh, I think it was one or two maybe other drums. But uh, so there's, there's not a lot of material left uh, to, to use for drums. But uh, I think for me, the defining thing about this drum, which I found uh, a little bit by accident, but uh, uh, you'll hear in the video, is the fact that um, I was able to hit this drum with my finger and uh, it, basically the note rang for about five seconds. So, uh, you know, when was the last time you hit a snare drum and the ring lasted for five seconds? You know, I, I love that about thick shelled snare drums. But, uh, but anyway, um, this is what it sounds like and uh, please excuse the playing. It was the end of a very long day and I was feeling very uninspired. But anyway, this is what the drum sounds like and also, you know, looks like as well. And so thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.